Some people really get this channel. Like this guy right here. Oh, okay, you know what? That's, that's actually not the, the guy I was thinking of. Let me start over. Some people really get this channel. Like this dude right here, Joe Dirt. Although, if I had to choose between Van Hagar and Van Lee Roth, I'd pick Van Joe Strummer. And for like five or six months, he's been pretty consistent about wanting me to review the all-terrain chopper and drinking some cold steel while doing it. Or steel reserve. I think I'm going to do that a few times. I don't know where I got the idea in my head that the all-terrain chopper was expensive. I told him I saw it for 150 bucks, which may have, you know, let on. I don't know anything about knives like that very astute piece of shit earlier caught on to. I don't know, 150 bucks. Did I see that on Blade HQ? You know I love you guys. Anyway, like he said, what better thing to pair a big piece of steel from Cold Steel with than a beer that gets all its flavor from its namesake. Steel Reserve. The old 211 and an 8.1, because 211 sounds like something you may pick up on a police scanner. And if the thumbnail, the very appearance of a can of Steel Reserve in a video about a large machete aren't warning enough, you idiot, please don't attempt anything seen in the video, because I'm an idiot. Fun fact, any property damage, bodily harm, or crime committed under the influence of Steel Reserve, you're actually not responsible for it. Steel Reserve's team of high-powered billboard lawyers picks up the tab. Kind of like punching someone at a Trump rally. I know, you're right, sounds unbelievable. But before we get into any of that, let's take a look at the dimensions, like the overall length and weight, with and without the sheath. Steel Reserve is the beer equivalent of getting punched in the face by someone you have a crush on. And by crush on, I mean stalking. Blade size and cutting edge. Do you have any good Steel Reserve stories? It's okay if you don't remember. Handle size and grip area. Most people's memories are refreshed when watching CCTV footage of themselves at a trial. Spine thickness and handle thickness. It's obvious when you drove the car into the pool that it was already on fire. You were doing so to try to save lives. Tallnesses. Do they screen jurors for steel reserve drinkers? Because if so, that doesn't sound like a jury of your peers to me. Oh, I almost forgot. How about the can? Looks like an everyday carry size to me. Great. The all-terrain chopper is just cold steel for big fucking machete. It has a large handle and a Warncliffe blade. Can you refer to a machete's blade as Warncliffe style? Is steel reserve technically a beer? The blade is made from 1055 carbon steel with a baked on anti-rust coating straight from the cold steel kitchen in South Africa where it's made. This blade has no distal taper, meaning it doesn't get thinner from the spine to the edge or the tip. It's just a flat piece of steel with a sharpened edge. Stated a different way to pad for length, it maintains a constant spine thickness all the way from the handle to the tip. The edge to my eyes has a slight convex grind. Could be the steel reserve talking though. 1055 will rust if not cared for, or if you spill beer on it, which explains its murdered out aesthetic. The blade is full tang, so it runs the full length of the handle. Since the blade doesn't have a belly or a curve, if you're chopping downward, the tip tends to get a workout, especially considering the length. The weight when chopping is at the end of the blade because that's where it's thick. It is a heavy machete at over two pounds, so it can get fatiguing for some people or a lot of people. The handle, it's plastic and it covers a full tang. If you remember my Instagram post, I mean it was kind of forgettable. But you'll remember that the box arrived at my doorstep opened without any padding inside, which should be an expected fuck you from the eBay seller for a $28 sword that probably took $20 to ship. I bring that up because the polypropylene handle has a puncture in it, which I don't think comes like that from the factory, and I probably would have done anyway. It's hard wearing, yet comfortable plastic handle that has room for your hand and your drunk friend's hand, too. There's plenty of texture to keep it in your hands, even when drenched in all sorts of fluids, like blood when you've chopped off a finger. You have the front key in and a rear key in on the butt of the handle that just doesn't quit. Maybe it's the beer, but I think I'm in love. The sheath. The sheath is more like the sling that protects you from the blade. If you happen to be doing stupid stuff while it's sheathed, which, let's be honest, it's probably going to be rare that it's sheathed. You can sling it over your shoulder to keep people from talking to you in line at the bank or at church. You cannot attach it to the belt, though. There are three snaps keeping it retained, and after unsnapping them, it's still kind of a pain in the ass to get out because of the wide tip. 
so good luck if you've been drinking. The sheath is made from nylon and plastic, and if you own any other cheap cold steel sheaths, you kind of know what you're getting. Nylon and plastic, of course, are two components of a steel reserve aftertaste. Comparisons. First, the ATC, the all-terrain chopper. The product page on Cold Steel's website calls it a stalwart hunting and wilderness survival companion. Okay. I assume it's more of a bushwhacking tool, and they're not inferring you chase a wild animal down with this, but it is kind of hard to say for sure with Cold Steel where people fish with swords. As a machete for me, I prefer something, oh, say a pound lighter, like the Ontario 18-inch machete seen here, which is about 20 bucks. They make really long machetes, even longer than the Cold Steel, but honestly, because I'm not a real man, I prefer something shorter than the Cold Steel, like the Ontario, for cutting through brush that's, you know, less fatiguing to use. However, if you want a pure, cheap chopper, maybe something like a short but heavy cane machete from still closed website as I edit this review, Aranyak, which makes a little more sense. For chopping, you generally don't use something as long as a sword, unless you're all out of bubble gum, so something shorter with a thicker blade stock, like this Aranyak cane machete, could be better in theory. And don't you dare say what about an axe. The Yoshimi machete, this blade is about the same weight, but with thicker blade stock, a more compact profile blade, I feel similarly about this as I do the all-terrain chopper. This one has a very nice sheath, but costs about $140. So it's for the microbrew crowd who like chopping things in their backyard, like an insane person. And now one more long one, the Aranyak Extended Magnum Latin Machete. Also a thicker blade stock, much like all of the Aranyak's neighbor gossip generating lawn sword line, but also kind of long and heavy. Just to repeat myself, short and heavy for a chopper, is better than long and heavy, in my opinion. Are we done? No. You know why? Because we haven't started drinking yet, which I don't understand because you've already been up an hour. What better way to play with a cheap machete than having something to wash it down than fall face down in your own vomit with? A steel reserve. It's like a light beer with a kick, if that kick were obtained with acetone. It comes in a standard headache two by four, like seen here. Also a stomach pumping 42 ounce plastic bottle because Steel Reserve knows their audience. Let's say they're doing you a solid because glass means an additional charge of assault with a deadly weapon instead of just a standard plastic bottle drunk and disorderly. Steel Reserve, if you've ever wondered what white lightning tasted like with your cornflakes. Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, chop that like button, Patreon me so I can create more high quality content like this, and thanks for watching.